this very festive looking package just arrived in the mail. <laughs> brushes. Brushes. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put these all away properly now. <laughs> Thank you, Mikiel. We're gonna be able to finish painting our galley directly because of you. And rollers. <laughs> yes, tons of rollers. Thank you. Last painting project, we basically went with a local hardware store type paint, matte white, one part, and the results are in. It sucks! It gets moldy after one rainfall, and it is peeling in the spots where I failed to sand the area a little more deeply. So we need to change the game plan for the next little bit of painting. A main part of that change will involve going with a high gloss instead of a matte paint. And the other side of the plan involves use of epoxy, which I've been using for nearly everything else in my life so far. Prepping and sanding are the exercise of eroding things away. Like most projects on this boat, this begins with me scratching and scraping things away. We've got these huge pilot house windows, which I'm still struggling to stop from leaking. One by one, scraping them from the frame, cleaning them with a brush and a knife as best as possible. Prepping the hole that they came out of as best as possible to seal the area from rainwater that was seeping in, slowly rotting the wood frame of the pilot house. There's only one way that I feel comfortable sealing this wood up, and that is by mixing up a batch of epoxy. The characteristics that I like about this epoxy, and generally look for these qualities with any epoxy, are that it dries very hard, but not too brittle, has some flexibility, sands very dry, not gummy at all, and mixes well with fillers. And you might notice here that the majority of our epoxy filler is now recycled dust from sanding the walls of our boat. I thicken it to peanut butter levels, then fill in the gap between the aluminum window frame and the bare wood. Once the gap is sealed, the area is sanded again. And then I add another layer of slightly thickened epoxy to seal the deal. I've been doing all this while waiting for our next special arrival, a can of actual nice, two-part paint, which we've been saving up for for some time in order to paint the second coat of our galley. Philosophically, painting is the process of cleaning and renewing. When we started painting this area, uh, the galley, in our boat previously, we had determined that we weren't going to use a primer. Now technically, a primer is good for every situation. Any surface can do with a primer, basically. Uh, Prepping the surface with that one extra protective layer is, I can't think of a situation where that's a bad thing. I can give you all the excuses as to why we didn't prime the area. The first reason is that we don't have enough paint or primers or good enough or what we consider to be good enough materials for priming surfaces. In the past we've used brands such as Interlux, uh, we've used Interprotect on our old boat Rosa, that's a very good sealing coating to be able to cover fiberglass or bare fiberglass. It seals the fiberglass surface really well from damaging things such as moisture and that worked great when we were in the States. When Robbie was working on boats in Southeast Asia, he used a lot of Jotun paints and primers. We don't have those brands here at the moment and we haven't found something that we're happy with here in Mexico. So instead of using primer, what we've actually done on surfaces that have not already been painted or gel coated is we've been using two-part epoxy as a primer. So when we first got the boat, we removed the ceiling panels and we exposed bare fiberglass here from the original building of the boat. And we knew that we wouldn't want to just put 
a paint, a one-part paint or a two-part paint, or even a primer just up, up on there on that bare fiberglass. We wanted to cover that with something really resistant because it's, it's the fiberglass of the boat. It's the, it's the heart of the boat. It's something that you really don't want to let moisture get at or else you'll get things like blisters, UV radiation and salt water and sun. It destroys fiberglass. We knew that we really wanted to get some sort of a two-part coating that was going to protect this fiberglass. Everywhere else in, say, the galley here, we either had wood that wasn't very well protected originally, or we had gel-coated fiberglass. So in both cases, we just prepped, sanded the area, then we just put the nicest two-part paint that we could find on it. What we ended up doing for a lot of bare fiberglass or wood, for example, when I built the water tanks, the next best thing that we could find to a really good primer was a two-part epoxy that could be applied to the area instead. So actually what I found locally is a pretty good brand of two-part epoxy. It's meant for making tabletops and for flooring, for garage or cement flooring. A two-part epoxy that can also be mixed with white pigment. And what the white pigment is nice for is if I'm going to be painting the area white in the end, I mix that white pigment in with the two-part epoxy primer, kind of primer layer, and then it is easy to then just add one layer of paint or less paint over top because the area is already nicely matte and white. The two-part epoxy mixed with the pigment, with the white pigment, is actually quite resistant to UV. I wouldn't recommend painting two-part epoxy with pigment and then putting it out in the sun or having that uh, outside, but I have painted our stove box with this a layer of two-part epoxy with the pigment and it has not been yellowing whatsoever. What I have learned so far is that when using any two-part component uh, coating, paint, primer, or epoxy, it will simply destroy the painting tools that you are using. You have to be willing to sacrifice the paint brushes or the rollers that you're using. I've tried recycling them, I've tried cleaning them with the thinners, or the acetone that I'm using, but in the end, your two-part epoxy will harden that brush, it will harden that roller, and with the chemical processes involved with two-part paints or epoxies, it usually destroys anything foam-related. So if you're trying to use a foam roller, it's pretty much useless, the foam roller disintegrates after a couple of slides across the surface and if you're trying to use for example those little petite dinan type the, the smallest yogurt cups that you can get around here i thought they would have been perfect for mixing my two parts or three parts to my one part ratios and they just melt the cup i know this from experience oh and the other thing that i guess i want to talk about on the subject of little tiny cups mix the smallest batches that you can mix, or I like to mix the smallest batches that I can possibly mix. The smaller the better. If I can find a tiny little plastic cup that won't melt, I use that to mix my ratio of 3 to 1 or 2 to 1, whichever it may be. I would rather not lose gigantic batches of paint for any reason if somebody has to come to the boat for our help or if I get an important phone call. I don't want to lose big batches of epoxy. I mix these tiny little batches and it, to me it's worth the time of having to keep on mixing these tiny little batches every five minutes rather than lose those entire containers of paint, primer, or epoxy. I arm myself with the necessary tools, mixing bowl, measuring cup, stir stick, microfiber roller, paint tray, and today we're using a Mexican paint called Nervion. It's got two components, three to one, and a solvent, which I will add a bit later when the paint starts to become a little goopy near the end. Shake it all up.
defluff the roller, and rock and roll. Some paints require their solvent or thinner immediately if they are particularly thick or don't spread onto the surfaces nicely. This particular paint does not need it, not at the beginning anyways, and this application was an amazingly drip-free affair. This super glossy paint will deflect oils, sauces, staining chemicals, all the stuff that we expect to encounter while working in the galley. And we want a strong paint. None of this shoddy peeling stuff. We hope to use it outside as well as inside of the boat. <laughs> 